He's the columnist for the L.A. Times and certainly a lot to write about recently. Bill Plaschke joining us. The uh, most recent column at uh, two critical moments, analytics failed the Dodgers. Now they face an 0-2 World Series deficit. Bill, good morning. Thanks for joining us. How deep is that hole that the Dodgers are in tonight? Well, it's pretty deep. they got about nine innings to get out of it. But, I mean, I think the one thing that Dodger fans can take solace in is that they haven't even seen their best team on the field yet for the yeah. first two games. You know, and that's – and that's or, or could, I shouldn't say take solace. It's driving them crazy. But the analytics and all the, uh, the matchups and everything, at least tonight the, against the right-hander for the Red Sox, they'll have their, their top three home run hitters in the lineup for the first time. They'll also have their best starting pitcher on the mound for the, in the last two months, uh, Walker Buehler. So I think that's where their hope comes in. I think, that they, I think they figure if they can get one out of here. And then the Red Sox will start right-handers, or an, another right-hander probably on Saturday. So they figure they got two shots at it. Uh, so I think, you know, I think the hole is deep, but I think it, it can be dug out of. I'm also looking at the analytics, and I know the front office of the Dodgers, they love their analytics. And I just can't imagine, like, in, in a previous decade or generation, Bill, you know, we're old enough to know that you would not have sat your left-hander against a left-hander if he's one of your top home run guys. And here you got Bellinger, Muncie sitting. I understand Jock Peterson, but Muncie and Bellinger, or certainly Bellinger, I just have to have my good players get some swings there. They can't get one at bat in the game. I, I don't understand the logic. Can you help me there? Yeah, yeah, it worked. No, no, I really can't help you there much, Dan. It worked. It worked in the regular season. It worked brilliantly. It's a regular season thing, and it works over the course of time. And then it worked in the playoffs against the Braves and Brewers because they have oh, they they do a lot of bullpenning and they don't have any really strong starting pitching. But if you have a strong starting pitcher that's going to go four or five innings or at least five innings, it, it really doesn't seem to work. It just, I think, at some point, you've got to step back and say, wait a minute, they have on the bench for World Series Game 1 a 35 home run hitter and the NLCS MVP. Both of them are on the bench for the first two games of the world. You have to, at some point, somebody's got to sit back and say, what are we doing here? I mean, at, at some point, you've got to let the players play. And I think this has always been the criticism of the analytics-heavy front offices. And again, it's got you know they've won six division straight division championships out here. This is the second straight World Series, so it works to a point. But at some point, I would think the human element's got to take over, and I think Dodger fans are going crazy about that, saying, "Okay, just play the best damn players." Yeah, yeah, that that's what I came away with. I even talked to Johnny Bench about that yesterday. I like, can you imagine you would be sitting somebody because the analytics say the lefty on lefty is not in our favor at some point. Like, Kirk Gibson never would have made it to the plate, Bill, because the analytics would have said, well, he's broken down. He'll never be able to hit Dennis Eckert. Like, all these things. You know, would Bucky Dent have gone to the plate on a righty-righty matchup here or, you know, Aaron Boone? Like, it just – there at some point, you you have to have a gut feeling, it feels like, more than just these are the numbers. Well, what's one of the biggest pressure hits you can have? The biggest pressure appearances, moments in all sports would be to hit a home run in a game seven. Cody Bellinger did that, yeah. and he's on the bench the next day <laughs> in World Series Game One. Uh, uh, and it just—and I know what the numbers say, but I just think you, I just figure he, Cody Bellinger, and Max Muncy could have run into one or two the last couple of nights, couldn't they? I mean, uh, th that's my point. And again, I'm not—you know—I'm not saying it doesn't work. It did work over the course of the regular season because it does, and it doesn't work in certain matchups. But in a short, in a seven-game series with good starting pitching. It just it just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, so it's a shame. It's weird. We're saying, well, the Dodgers have a chance now because they're going to play their best players. Oh wow! <laughs> We're talking to Bill Plaschke, LA Times, and around the horn joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Uh, four days ago, I was seeing headlines that you know, is it time for the Lakers to panic? Question mark. And now that they won a couple of games in a row and they beat the Nuggets, who are going to be at one of the top teams in the West. So now, what is the spin here? Oh, I saw it last night, Dan. I saw the future. It's a four seed. Don't <laughs> panic. It's a four seed. I can see it now. Yeah. I was ready to say LeBron. Really, last week I'm like, this team, when LeBron doesn't play, this is the same old stinky Lakers. They're horrible. But, no, he's, he seems to have had an impact. They, 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 they shared the ball last night, a bunch of guys in double figures. They played defense. They hustled. Kobe Bryant was there selling his book, so he was on the side, on the sidelines there, uh, and and it was it was a huge night, and I think no, and I think that showed what it can be, and again, again, it, it's not gonna be anything more than a four or five seed, but I think they can get there. They beat a pretty good Nuggets team, and they did it with a team effort, and they did it without Rondo and Ingram out there. So and even even Lonzo Ball, I thought last night Lonzo Ball, I thought 
has no place. The early returns seem to me like he has really no place on this team. Even he seemed to fit in last night. So I think maybe LeBron's having the, the LeBron effect is starting to work, and it's it, it could be big. Fourth seed, I can I can smell it from last night. But you said Lonzo Ball fit in last night, but when Rondo comes back and Ingram comes back, it just feels like he gets pushed down the totem pole here. And and I just yeah, wonder, I know, I know, I know. We right? have to see more of that. You're right. No, you're right. You got to see more of that. But because he seemed to be like the extra piece that, in my opinion, last week I'm thinking they're going to trade this guy before before February because he just doesn't fit in here. But if LeBron can make it happen, if he can get these guys involved, if he can figure out a way to get it spaced on the floor with him, and uh, again, last night showed what they could be. And, you know, they came back early and they played defense. So, again, I just think I think the, the ceiling is, is back to where it should be, which is, again, a four or five seed. Lonzo's dad, we haven't heard much from him. Um, I was wondering if there's That's an... wonderful. Oh, my God. Don't, don't provoke <laughs> I know, it. I know. But I don't. No, it, this no. isn't a coincidence, is it? It feels like there was something no. that was said in the offseason, like Magic said to, you know, Lonzo, Lonzo's dad, you know, here's the deal. You know what? Let's let's just be quiet. Let let's for your son's future. Let's just be quiet. No, no. I think that happened last year and it didn't work. <laughs> I think they even threatened to trade him. I think they even threatened to trade the kid if the dad didn't shut up. And I don't think that worked. I think what worked was LeBron James. I think finally Levar Ball, Levar Ball, or uh, uh, that's his name, right? Levar, yeah, Levar yeah. Ball. He's yeah, okay. He, <laughs> I've, I've almost almost forgotten who he is. He saw a guy who's actually bigger and more status than he is. He didn't think Magic Johnson had this current status among, you know, among the sporting public to uh, stand him down, but LeBron does. And I think LeBron's presence finally shut up LeVar, and he realized, and then he got scared. He said, well, maybe the Lakers don't have the guts to trade my son. LeBron will sure trade my son, so I better keep my mouth shut. So I think LeBron's presence has had a wide range of effects, and one of them is to shut up LeVar. If there was a fan vote on... Four more Dodger wins, the Rams going to the Super Bowl, or the Lakers go to the NBA Finals? God, that's a good, that's a good question. That's a, however, I've, we've seen during this postseason, the Dodger uh, um, attention has been enormous out here. And people, I think after 30 years, I think even casual Dodger fans are going crazy about the Dodgers. The Dodgers, I think they would, anybody would take the poll would be 199% get the four more wins, break that 30-year drought. I think the Rams are still kind of a new thing here, and I think LeBron is kind of a thing in progress. But I think fans, judging from the metrics of our newspaper and what people are reading and what people are responding to, the Dodgers are overwhelmingly, people are just so sick of the 30 years. And the Dodgers are sick of hearing it. I think the Dodgers, that, that, that's still the number one thing by how, far. How crazy is traffic going to be on Sunday in Los Angeles, Bill? It'll be like a Tuesday or Wednesday. It'll be like every day out here. You know, you know, and no, it will. It will be. It'll be like every day out here. I mean, that's just that's just the way you. It's just the way it is. I mean, I think, yeah, and I, but also everybody's talking about all the different sport events. The only event, the only two events that are going to get the big stuff are the Coliseum, the Rams, the Col- Rams, Packers, and the Dodgers. You know, Red Sox. Uh, the, the folks downtown are used to have the way that they have their back ways to get in and all that stuff. So now nah, it's a different, every day out is bad. I'm going to get it in the car right now and go down to the, do, the round the horn studio. And it's going to be terrible. It's terrible every day. So uh, good to visit with you, Bill. Have a great weekend. Thanks for uh, spending thanks. some time. Thanks for having me. See you. That's uh, Bill Plaschke, LA times and around the horn. For more Dan Patrick show tune to audience channel 239 on direct TV or download the Dan Patrick show app.